This week, Andrew Kramer from videocopilot.net released a video on YouTube and a new set of assets on his website, videocopilot.net, called SlimeFX, which is a series of keyed out slime effects, basically practical ones that he made in his studio. And he normally his videos and his products are for uh, Adobe After Effects, but I'm going to show you how you can use them in DaVinci Resolve and in Fusion. So just keep watching this video and I'll show you how to use this great free slime effects pack from Video Copilot in DaVinci Resolve be using DaVinci Resolve 16.1. Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to videocopilot.net and right here under the blog, click on that, and you'll see the slime FX. And you can watch the YouTube video where he kind of shows how he made it, uh, did a lot of work on it, so I definitely think you should probably go check out his video. But when you're ready, come right down here and it says download slime stock FX pack. So you just right click on that, click save target as. It's basically a zip file, so you save that wherever you want to keep your assets. Okay, once you unzip it and open it up, it's four different folders. Uh, one is still frames of the different effects. You can see them here. But then there's also different ones of dripping. And you can kind of get an idea here that they uh, includes both the MOV files and also uh, previews and PNG, which you can double click on, kind of see what the effect's going to look like. And the ones under dripping are kind of uh, transparent, kind of like clear slime, while the slime pulls have more color and substance to them. They're a little more like, like a opaque slime or translucent slime other than kind of transparent. And now I'll show you how to load them in Resolve and use them. Okay, once you're in Adventure Resolve, open up and start a new project. And you come into the Media tab here. Navigate to the drive where you've uh, unzipped the folders for the assets. Find that folder, and you'll see the four different subfolders. So I'll show you each of these. So I'm going to start off with the slime dripping. So I double click on that. One thing, if you're going to be using it as still images, if you want them to come into your media pool as individual images instead of an image sequence, like here, here's 11 different pictures, PNGs, but it's coming up and coming in as a sequence. You want to make sure you have show individual frames. That'll show all the different PNGs. Now I'm not actually going to be using any of those, so if you want to isolate just the uh, video files, MOVs, come up, click on the search, and just type in MOV, and then I'll limit it just to the uh, movie files. And you can drag select them and bring them into your media pool. Then you can either decide to change the frame rate or don't. I'm not going to change it for this particular project. Now I come into one of these, so I'm going to come into the slime pulls now, do the same thing. Filter by MOV. And then just choose the ones that I want. Drag them into my media pool. And then go to the sludge dripping and do the same thing. Choose just the video files. And now they're all in my media pool, so I can go to the edit. And here you can see all the different ones. So if you want to preview them, just double click on it and then play, and I'll give you a preview of what it looks like. And you can do that with any of these. And then hit play. And they are pretty high quality. I think they're actually uh, basically 4K, but if you look at them, they're not full, full width. They're only about half the width. So they're, they're 2160 high but they're not the full width, 3840 wide. And this is all the slime, so I can now show some of the pulls. So if I play this through, you can see how this has a little more substance. It's not see-through. It's actually got color to it. But since it's white, you could tint it anything you want. And I'll show off a couple different ones here. Here's another slime pull. Now you can also pull in some footage, so I'll bring in some footage here. This uses a test, so I'll drag that down here. And I'll take this. Now, 
So that's slime pulls four. So before, if I want to drag it onto the timeline above it into the second video track, right click on it first, go to clip attributes, and make sure the alpha is set to make sure it's set to one of these settings, straight or pre-multiplied. And then if you drag it over and go alternate, you can see it. See it composited here. You can play through it. Now you probably wouldn't just throw it in here like this. I'm just doing this for demonstration. You can also come into the inspector, make sure you have that clip selected, and then you can adjust it just like you can any other clip. Change its size, change its position. So if you want to come at, from up here and then play it through. You do that with any of these. Go to clip attributes. Again, make sure the alpha mode is set correctly. You can drag or drop onto the timeline. And here's the second one. It's kind of like paint almost, dripping. And it kind of tears. Now you could use it this way, but I'd probably be more inclined to use it in the Fusion tab. So I'll show now uh, how you can use it in the Fusion tab. Okay, here I am in the Fusion tab. So I have my media in and my media out. And I have my media pool open here. So I can drag and drop down into the node editor here. And then I can hit the one key and pull that up here. And you can see now how it's, scroll down here, it's actually 1080 wide by 2160 high. So use that then to composite that in with um, whatever footage you have, especially if you have say uh, 1920 by 1080 footage, if you only have uh, full HD footage, then you could probably have to resize this or use a transform node. But if I just connect this up as is, you see it's much bigger in the footage there if I could drag it down and have it play. And you can see you come in. But then I can also add in after media in, I can do say transform node and then I can resize it to anything I want and move it around and have it come off. See off the corner here and have it play through. And it comes dripping down. Now you can add this to other assets you have in your 2D or maybe even 3D, add it with an image plane into a 3D scene, and then composite the, the assets, the FX, where you want them. Uh, you could also uh, do some colorization. So this is white, so you basically make it anything you want. So, so yeah, after the media in here, I could do a color corrector, and then I could say make this more reddish. and mess with the saturation, make it a little more saturated. And you can play around with the different colors and the gain and you do stats, make it a little darker. Mess with the gamma, maybe make that a little bit lower or higher, depending on how you want it, want it to look. But you can play right around with that and use other nodes to make it look the way you want. Now with some of these other ones here, so we have these drips. So I'll choose one of these slime drips and drag that down and put that in here and you can see it and I can back it up here and play it through and that's a little more transparent but if you just add that in straight you can see that you then see the black background so what you're going to have to do is use a luma here so you come into your effects library come into tools go to matte and then add a luma here after and then you could change mess with the high here and bring that down so it's a little more visible. I also want to do a transform on this because again it's a, it's a little big for if you're working in 1920 by 1080 if you're working in 4k then it's default size is probably fine but if you're doing anything smaller you might want to go add a transform again you can shrink that down so it fits a little bit more into it and place it place that over this other side here and then play through you see that's a little more transparent. Probably work better if it's not this large compared to your scene. Uh, again, if you had some text here or if you had a creature and you wanted some slime dripping from it, you could composite this in, shrink it down, move it over, even keyframe it 
to uh, be where you want in the frame. But this is just a quick example of how it looks and how it works. See if I go back to the media pool, there's quite a few of these included. But it's a really valuable uh, asset, especially uh, very nice of Andrew to uh, include this for free and have it available on his website and go through all the trouble of creating this pack. Again, I'd go to his YouTube channel and watch the video and sh see all the trouble he went through in creating it. But this was how to use the new Copilot Slime FX pack in DaVinci Resolve. And again, this is DaVinci Resolve 16.1.1 but it should work in eventually resolve 15 or 16, 16.1 as well. So hopefully you found this useful and I thank you for watching.